I'm Father Jonathan Meyer, pastor of All Saints Parish in Dearborn County, Indiana. I just want to take this opportunity as we as a province and as an archdiocese uh, have suspended masses, have closed our churches, and we stand at this very historical moment. And as a parish here in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, our hearts are very saddened. Um, I can honestly say to you that I can never in my whole entire life ever think that this day would be here. And yet here we are. A priest of Jesus Christ and my people can't come to Mass. Over the past six years that I've been here at All Saints Parish, we have been through so much. I know that God will see us through this. Just as God saw us through parish closures and parish appeals, and God saw us become a parish, and God saw us through restoration, and God saw us through the founding of an adoration chapel, God has seen us through youth ministry and festivals, and God has seen us through conversion and renewal and evangelization. God will see us through this. But we, the people of All Saints Parish, need to do what God is calling us to do. So first and foremost, know that I believe that God has a plan for you and that it is going to be brought to fulfillment. But it is totally okay for you to acknowledge the fact that this is terrible. In the statement that I wrote earlier today, I mentioned the fact that, like, this is grief. We need to acknowledge the fact that, that we are dying to what we knew as normal. Now, I will, I will guarantee that this is not the new normal. This, this is not a normal that I want you to get normal with, but it's real, and it's raw, and it hurts. Death has happened. But with death comes new life. When we look at the stages of grief, and many of you are in this right now, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. Many of you honestly can't believe the fact right now like, that the diocese has done this. The diocese has done this out of love. It has. It's an act of love to you. It's an act of love to our parishioners. It's an act of love to the elderly. It's an act of love to our elderly priests. So we have to allow ourselves to go through that process of denial. We have to allow ourselves to be angry and frustrated. We have to ask all the questions of what, well, well, couldn't we have done this? And what about this? And what if we did this? And, and we, we need to just come to acceptance. That this is where we're at right now. But we will not allow this to stop us from being who we are. The Mass is our lifeblood. The Mass is our strength. The Eucharist and perpetual adoration, that is who we are. Over these past few years, like our parish expectations are very clear. Attendance of daily Mass, attendance of one daily Mass a week, an hour of perpetual adoration, praying the rosary, going to confession. These are all the expectations that have been made very clear to parish, and now it seems as if they're all gone. But what's behind all of them? It's our Lord. It's our faith. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And my dear brothers and sisters, that is there. That is there. I'd like to take us through the directives that, that we're going to be following here as a parish. And I'm so thankful to our parish staff, I'm so thankful to the daily mass crowd that came to mass today that was willing to stay after Mac and mass and, and collaborate and come up with this vision. And the great thing, brothers and sisters, is that we have, we have a parish purpose. Like, we aren't just like, well, what should we do? No, no, we have a parish purpose. So the question is, if we're a parish, then we have a purpose and we just need to keep doing what we're doing. You know, things don't change as much as we think that they really will. It, don't get me wrong. It's going to be different. But we have a purpose, and that purpose is still going to be fulfilled. So what's our parish purpose? We are the saints that God is calling us to be by providing faithful teaching, authentic worship, and compassionate service. Our faith and actions nourish engaged Catholics, inspire unengaged Catholics, and invite all to Christ's church. So as we know, it's, we call it the two, you know, three prongs. 
faithful teaching, authentic worship, and passionate service. Nourishing the engaged, inspiring the unengaged, and invite all to Christ church. So what are we going to do during this time? No, we look to our purpose. What's our purpose? Well, our first purpose is faithful teaching. So I'm just going to break down very simply and just talk us through, like, how are we going to do faithful teaching in this new situation? Well, number one, we have formed. I ask every single parishioner to make sure that, that they are using formed. It is a tremendous resource of online books and resources and videos. Use it. Number two, we have an app, and our app is amazing. If you have not downloaded our app, if you have not made that a part of your life, please do. I, last week, I was hearing a confession, and someone just came in, and they're like, Father, our app is amazing. I love our app. And I was like, thanks be to God. And it helped their confession. So the app will help you with many, many things. Number three, um, we are going to be providing catechesis, faithful teaching, right, on the following things. Um, we're going to be offering discussion questions for the upcoming Sunday homilies, the, the upcoming, well, my homilies, for the upcoming Sunday readings every single week. You'll see those pushed out through our app, Facebook, YouTube, and email. We'll also do catechesis on spiritual communion. More catechesis, as you know, we just did a huge parish catechesis on the rosary. We're going to continue that because we're going to ask for the, for the praying of the rosary to continue all the more. We're also going to be setting aside catechesis on the Lord's Day. For, for the vast majority of us as Roman Catholics, like, the Lord's Day, like the source and the summit, right, is the Holy Mass. But when that's not there, how do we celebrate the Lord's Day? And why is the Lord's Day so important? And why does it say so clearly in Scripture that that, that, that day should be set apart, okay? Next, uh, for our younger kids, we will be emailing out uh, all of our coloring pages that we often distribute at our fish fries. We're going to be offering coloring pages for the Stations of the Cross. We want to keep them engaged, so they will have Sunday reading coloring pages uh, sent out to all of you. And then also, on, under faithful, faithful Teaching, tune into Sacred Heart Radio. Start listening to Catholic Podcasts. So kind of going along with, with, with Formed and the app, there are great resources out there. You are not abandoned. It is there. So faithful teaching. Now we're going to move on to authentic worship. We, as a parish, are rooted in the sacraments. We're also rooted in the sacramentals. Now, sacraments, in a certain sense, are not there. Confession and anointing of the sick in extreme situations or danger of death, but Outside of that, when it really comes down to it, we're moving into a mode of, of not having the sacraments at this moment, but we still have sacramentals. I think it's really, really important that we look at those sacramentals which lead us to the sacraments, and during this time, use them all the more. I want to encourage you to increase your use of holy water, increase your use of blessed candles, to go throughout your house and emphasize those sacramentals, those statues, those figurines, those icons, those paintings, it's going to be tremendously important. Um, at the parish office in Dover, outside, on the back porch, not gathered in large groups, but you can come by individually. We will have large jugs where you can get holy water. It'll just be out there all the time. There also will be available... Um, blessed candles. There'll also be a, uh, a box of envelopes. You can mail the donation back in. Okay. Once again, if you can't make a donation, it's fine. But I, I really would like you to have blessed candles in your home. I would like you to have uh, holy water that has been blessed for you to have in your house so that you can remind yourself of your baptism. You can remind yourself uh, of being the light of Christ. Also, in the realm of of, uh, of authentic worship. We want you to participate in Mass. So, all of our Masses, including now all of our daily Masses, the daily Masses that I will be celebrating every single day, for the intentions that they are scheduled for already, for your intentions, those will be celebrated uh, through uh, YouTube Live. Uh, we're working on that technology. We'll have that set and ready to go uh, for March 18th. So making that a possibility uh, is really, really a great, a great grace and a, a great blessing for all of you. 
So in doing that, I think it's really important for us to, to look at say, say like, how do we do this well? So I want you to really work with me on this and work, we'll work together. And if you come up with, with ideas, that's great. I have a whole list of them here. But what I want you to do, if you're gonna watch Mass Online in your home, what I want you to do is I want you to create a place to do that. So I want you almost to make a chapel in your home where you will watch, where you either place your computer, you'll place your phone, or you'll watch on television. Now, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna offer a whole bunch of ideas, but if I were you, I would make that, that place in my room, in, in my home, the wall closest to the church. So closest to the tabernacle, closest to our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. Or number two, I would choose an east wall because we celebrate Mass Ad Orientum here at All Saints Parish on a two week, two week, off, two week on, two week off basis. So why do we do that? Because Jesus is gonna come from the east and we wanna be worshiping in the direction of the rising sun because Jesus rose from the grave. So create a place. Maybe that's where you should collect all your statues. Maybe that's where you wanna like actually like allow your children or decorate that place with the liturgical color of the season. If you can get some purple cloth, decorate it with purple cloth. If you can do whatever you can. I would like you to put two candles on either side of your phone or your computer or your television and light them when you're at mass. I want you to fast prior to that mass, just like you normally would. I want you to get dressed up just like you're going to Sunday mass. If you don't get dressed up for Sunday mass, maybe now is time to get dressed up for Sunday mass. I want you to sit in chairs like you would, and I want you to stand, sit, and kneel like you would at holy mass. Now, for those of you who can't kneel, don't kneel, <laughs> but I want you to participate as much as you can. I want you to participate in the responses. I don't want this to be passive. So if you can participate in the songs, if you can participate in the responses, if you're standing, you're sitting, it will enhance the experience. Make sure that all other technology is shut down. All other technology is put aside at those moments. So you can truly enter into it as much as you possibly can so that the distractions aren't there. I think those things are going to help tremendously uh, in helping the family do that, to really, really enter into, uh, into the mass. You'll see all those uh, that, that are there in, in, in the encouragements that we're putting forth. Also, because it is the Lord's Day, and this will come on the catechesis that will be given on the Lord's Day, it's going to be really, really important to make that day look and feel different than the rest of the week, particularly as things are being stripped from our culture, sports, activities, events, Sunday needs to be different because it's the Lord's day. It's the day of rest. So I think great questions is to begin to ask yourself, how will I rest this day different than other days? How will I spend more time with my family? How will I spend more time with prayer? What will I do? How does my family meal that day look different? Do we eat in the dining room? Do we eat with fine china that we have in the cupboard that we haven't used in years? How do we make Sunday different than the rest of the day? Because it's the Lord's Day. We're not going to be physically leaving the building, our home, going to a church, but it's still different. So I want to act different this day than we do on others' day. It might be having a family moving time, family movie time every Sunday where we watch a Catholic film off formed. But we, we deliberately say this is the Lord's Day. So authentic worship, key here. Enter into the Mass. Enter into the Mass in a profound way. Continuing, uh, we will be promoting some prayers for the sick. You'll see those will be, will be pushed out on our app, email, and Facebook. Uh, we have some beautiful litanies and some beautiful prayers, particularly to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, we're also going to be, of course, encouraging, as we have been encouraging, the praying of the daily rosary, uh, the importance of silence in your home. We would strongly promote the praying of the Angelus so that we as Catholics know that we're praying in common, even though we're in our own little homes, that I'm not praying alone. So the praying of the Angelus, the praying of the Divine Mercy Chapel at three o'clock um, in the afternoon. Um, and then I'm, we've had a perpetual oration chapel that has been open for three years straight. I am not allowed to open our church buildings. I'm not allowed to have outdoor masses. I'm not allowed to bring you communion. 
But I will tell you this. You can get in your car, and you can drive to our parish, and you can sit in our parking lot. For those of you who have hearts that ache to be with the Lord, I truly believe that our Lord will find in that like tremendous joy and delight. When we come before him in adoration, we see him face to face. When we come to church, he's veiled by a gold door and the colored cloth of the tabernacle veil. You can come to him. He'll be in a tabernacle. There'll be a gold door. There'll be a veil, and there'll be a brick wall, but he will be there. Fulton J. Sheen, when he committed his life to doing a holy hour every single day, and when he would travel around the country due to often like plane or train travel, he would arrive in a city and he hadn't done his holy hour yet, he would go and sit on a church front porch steps and just be with our Lord. You can do the same. Allow the Lord to lead you through that. Faithful teaching, authentic worship, compassionate service. So in this section, I just want to, I think the big word here is awareness. How are we going to be aware of others around us, particularly at this time of need? So number one, like we promise to work with grieving families. We will do all that we can to comfort those who are grieving as a parish staff and as a parish community, but we need to be all the more aware. Like when that happens, like how do we surround people with love when maybe we can't actually be with them? Number two, we're gonna encourage all parishioners to once again be very aware of communicating with our elderly, our sick, our shut-in. They cannot be forgotten. They are not having communion brought to them at this time. I am not encouraged to visit them at this time unless they are at extreme danger of death. But your phone calls, if you have the ability to work with a family member who, who is their primary care, to Skype or to Zoom or to whatever it means to be able to, to, to remain in communication with them. Provide food for neighbors. Uh, you know, we're not supposed to be in groups larger than 10, but we can drop uh, or visit, uh, bring food maybe for those uh, who are in need. It's very important for us uh, to maintain Meatless Fridays, to unite ourselves with the poor, to take on sacrifice as part of our uniting ourselves with our compassionate Lord. Uh, I think during these times to look for ways that we are able to volunteer our time, but also our resources to the Sunman, food the Sunman and North Dearborn Food Pantries, just like we do at the Gobble Wobble and throughout the whole entire years. There will be more people who are in need of those services now than ever. With as many jobs and situations taking place across our nation and our local area, there will be a lot of people who will be needing the food pantries. And so any way that we can be aware of them and to support them is, is, is really, really important. Uh, I want to be very clear on this next statement. The amount of anxiety and depression that is sweeping across our world right now is catastrophic. And we have the antidote which is hope and peace and joy because we have a God who is in control. We have a God who loves us. We have a God who saves us. You need to be very aware of friends, children, siblings, parents who may be gr literally struggling with depression and anxiety and to be compassionate and to be the presence of Christ for them and with them. I want to also be, have you just be aware of like your neighbors, who's with you, uh, and to really be present to them as much as possible. I think also during this time, it's also really important for us to work. We, we're using the word right now, social distancing. So social distancing, uh, we need to look in a very clear way to be all the more intimate, all the more compassionate, and all the more of a community. Like, we can't allow this to break down what God has brought together. You have a phone. Use it. You have a hand that can write letters to people. Use them. You have a mouth that can ask your children and your family and your friends questions. Use it. Engage in dialogue. Carefree timelessness 
is key here. I think it's also really important for us, uh, moms and dads, please love your children. They, in a time and an era where people are not going to hug or hold someone's hand or pat them on the head, it's so very important for us to remember. We're an incarnational people. Moms and dads, love your children. Husbands and wives, love each other. We cannot become so disconnected that people don't even know anymore what it is to be human. Remember our faith. Lastly, and I don't want this to be a big thing for all of us, but people have called in already about financial giving. You can mail your envelopes in. We do invite people to participate in online giving. Part of our compassionate service is us caring for the church, caring for those who are in need, and that will continue. So even though the collection basket will not be available, you are still able to be generous, which is such a great gift. I want this to be an opportunity for, opportunity for us to, to nourish our own faith through faithful teaching, authentic worship, and passionate service. I want this to be a time for us to inspire others. You know, I, I think you should take pictures of where you're going to watch Mass every weekend. I think you should take pictures of your home sanctuary, and you should place, paste it all over Facebook. You should send it out to all of your friends and say, hey, this is what we're doing. We can't go to church, but we're praying in our homes. I think you should take pictures of your children's coloring pages and post them all over the internet and inspire people. In a time where people are freaking out and they're full of stress, they're full of anxiety, they're full of fear, show them love, show them peace, show them joy. That's what God is calling us to do. And when you talk to your friends, when you talk to coworkers and they're full of fear and anxiety, don't forget that we are called to invite all to Christ's church Right, I, I am praying that the Holy Spirit will give you the grace at those moments to, to look at that person, to take that person by the hand and say, can I pray with you? I know a God who calms storms. I know a God who raised people from the dead. I know a God, and he loves you. Our world needs to hear that that we have a God that's bigger than all of this. That's your call. That's my call. I'll do all that I'm able to do to, to make that happen as your pastor. God has blessed us for six amazing years. As I stood before you all just a week ago, rejoicing in six years of being here, I had no idea that this is where we would be but this is where God has us. We will persevere. God will give us the strength. So may we continue to have the faith that has built this community. May we continue to be open and receptive to the grace that has formed us and forged us. And we will come out of this like we have ever, like with everything else. Stronger Catholics full of gratitude and a stronger parish. To God's grace, may it be so. Know my prayers, and please, please, please pray with us. Don't lose hope, and I'll see you at Mass. God bless.